Hello my friends, Lenny with Vintage Nationals on the web at nationalguitar.com I just got in this very sweet uh, 1931 fairly early style O that came out of an attic in uh, North Carolina I'm excited about this guitar, it's very light and I'm going to do a little uh, walkthrough on this guitar with you I'm going to take you over to the bench and look inside and see if we find anything of interest in this particular guitar so let's take a look inside this 1931 National Stylo here at Vintage Nationals on the web at nationalguitar.com. Now, as you can see, one of the cool, interesting features of this guitar is the hooks on cover plate. The idea with the hooks on cover plate was there would be one screw at the very top instead of nine screws all the way around. There would actually be a little hook that would go into a little rectangular slot. And then you would turn the cover plate and and make all those eight hooks fasten in place then you'd only have to put the one screw on at the top so we're going to go ahead and take off this cover plate probably for the first time ever and uh, take a look at the cone inside and see if there's any surprises so I'm going to go ahead and take out this one screw right here and I'm going to rotate counterclockwise just about an eighth of an inch the cover plate to release the hooks and then the whole cover plate will come straight up. These screws are actually made out of brass and they're actually soft. So I have this one particular screwdriver that I always use for the screws. It fits in there nice and tight and it's not going to damage the soft brass screw. As you can see I've got a magnet and it doesn't uh, doesn't pick that up. Now the tailpiece, standard national tailpiece, I've already taken it off. This actually has the standard early uh, deep screw. It's a wood screw and it is actually a metal screw with a brass strap button attached to it. The reason for the long screw on this is that there's a wooden block inside the body right here so this is actually going to go through the tailpiece into this wooden block that's going to be that we'll see once we open this up so now we're going to remove the cover plate so I'm going to turn it counterclockwise just a little bit voila a virgin cone from the 1930s. Now let's take a little look at the actual as you can see the little hooks hopefully you can see those as they work their way around. Now the problem with the hooks, in theory this was a good idea, the problem is these would tend to, if you took this on and off a couple times these would tend to bend and lift up and flare upward like that and sometimes actually just snap right off and then you've got a problem you've got a, a spot on your cover plate that's not being held down so they quickly went away from that idea now this cover plate is actually it's brass we can see a little bit of the brass but it's very thin if you one thing I noticed when I was touching this look at that that's a very thin cover plate so there we see our original cone and as you can see dust bunnies quite dirty now I think this has been open once and looking at the saddle here it looks to me well first of all there's a little piece missing right there a little chunk right there but it also looks to me like this has been lowered from the original and there was a little touch of wear in the screw itself there just a touch in this soft brass screw like it had been open one more time or one time and it probably was to lower the saddle down a little bit as the neck pulled forward over time uh, the typical thing is to lower that saddle down to get the action back down so it looks like that's been done one time especially when I see this piece missing right here now I'm gonna go ahead and clean this cone now I've cleaned the cone it looks beautiful doesn't it a couple things about this cone number one you can see it's an early cone because it has the four tacks to attach the biscuit to it later on they went to a screw down the center but these early ones had four tacks which was a pain in the butt I have to think for them to 
tech each one of those in individually it tells you the biscuits not been replaced because it's never been off you can you would know if these tacks have been taken out and put back in if you look at the edge of this I hope you can see it but it's a very sharp edge and it's kind of a crude edge if you can kind of see that edge where they actually just took a, a tin snips and went all the way around and it's not rolled up so the sharp edge is pretty much pointing out from the edge there uh, pointing out from the cone straight out whereas the later cones as you can see from this mandolin cone had a curled up edge to it and that's the difference so that's why I think this paper gasket was added to the well here because that sharp edge it's easy for that to vibrate against a metal well right there another thing that stands out about this guitar is it has the side posts uh, in addition to the front and back post so there's a post at the bottom of the neck stick right here and there's a post at the top of the neck stick but there's also a post on each side and the reason for the side posts was simply because some of these bodies when they were soldered together would have a back that was kind of floppy in other words it would push in and out like an oil can you know it's a pretty big piece of metal right here and it's curved and it's shaped uh, some of these bodies got to the point after they were soldered together where they were bouncy like that they would put these second uh, set of posts in there to stiffen the back to keep that from bouncing in and out let's take a little better look if you can see up close hopefully you can the actual uh, re, uh, openings for the hooks you can see that it's a little rectangle and there's eight of them all the way around and then a threaded hole this hooks on cover plate would go like this you'd get the cover plate with the hooks on it you'd line them up drop it in making sure that all of them are in sometimes you drop it in and one of them's missing or one of them's not caught all the way in you turn this clockwise and then that one that's not in uh, could break off or, or just be a problem that's it it's now on there that little bit of a turn that's how much play is in this what you would have in there is this would go through the body this piece right here is sitting against the top of the body right there and then on the bottom of this inside you see this screw right there going through the fingerboard on each side that screw this middle one is going straight there's the spot that would have gone into as you can see would have dropped right in there and then on each side of this on the inside there's a little mahogany strip which you can see and if you look there's a nut that's been recessed or pushed into the back side of that so the nut would sit on the bottom and the screw would go down through where these two dots are right here this would sit like this inside the body and the screw going into that dot would go through this it would be a threaded screw and catch that nut on the bottom of it so you're looking like this one of these on each side you can see we got the nice decal still intact on this I mean this is a beautiful example it's really had it's been played many many years ago but uh, it's going to restore up nicely we've got a beautiful cone which as you can see cleaned up very nicely it still has its structural integrity to it and we'll replace this saddle right here when we uh, reset the neck on this but otherwise a beautiful example of a 1931 style O with the rare hooks on cover plate there we go back in place and there you go I hope you enjoyed this little tour inside this very cool 1931 National Style O which is available now we should have a video playing this guitar very shortly as we uh, complete the restoration I hope you enjoyed this so we'll see you at the pick and parlor at Vintage Nationals on the web at nationalguitar.com thanks for joining us